grew up anywhere along the East Coast, crabbing might be a tradition you share with your family. Or maybe it was sitting around a giant table with family and friends picking crabs. Whatever it is, it's exactly what the show is all about. Recreating, making, and celebrating family traditions, which at the heart of so many is food. I'm at Summit Marina where I'm crabbing to get prepared for today's special guest who will be joining me to take the delicious lump crab meat from Blue Claw Crabs and transform it into delicious crab cakes, which we will also be pairing with other delicious sides. So stay tuned as I sit here on the dock of this bay and wait for some crabs to come crawling my way as we get ready for an amazing episode of the Red Clay Cook-Off Family Style. Welcome to the Red Clay Cook-Off series, where the content of our shows is really about bringing Red Clay students and family members and often staff members on the set with me to really get into learning all about what it means to really get together and cook in the kitchen. It develops healthy eating habits and also is a great family bonding experience. So really trying to pass that message on to the students of Red Clay and staff members. So today, I'm extremely excited to announce who our guests are. We have our own Red Clay superintendent, Darrell Green, and his daughters, Jasmine, student at Heritage, and Jada, student at Comrade, joining me on the show for what I know is going to be an amazing episode. Let's bring them on out. Hey, guys. Hi. Welcome to the Red Clay Cook-Off Kitchen. How are Sir, you? thank you so much for coming. I'm extremely excited to have you here. Thanks for having so, me. Absolutely. So the first time I met um, your dad, when he first came over to my office to meet him, I asked him if he would come on the show with me. And he was like, yeah, no hesitation. I love food. Yeah, food is awesome, right? Who doesn't? Um, so I was um, extremely pumped to have him and have you guys. So we got to meet once, and you guys are here today to cook with me. So tell me a little bit about what you guys like to do in the kitchen as far as cooking. I like to bake. Uh, Baking, OK. And I like to eat it. <laughs> like to eat it. That's the best part for sure. You guys get in the, the kitchen a lot with your dad? Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, and you, being in your new role as the superintendent, are extremely busy, but you still manage to find time to get in there. And Definitely try to. I think our Sundays are, are you know, that kind of downtime where we can actually enjoy a meal together. Yeah. Through the, throughout the week, obviously, it's a busy week now that school and activities and things so we try as much as we can to, to have that sit down meal that family time yeah. to connect so it is important awesome. your dad's your dad's a big deal he um he was also recently inducted into the university of delaware hall of fame for his history of football at university of delaware read a little bit in your background it's yeah. really impressive yeah. well, it, it's a humbling opportunity experience yeah. um ud provided me with a wonderful leadership opportunity experience so having the opportunity to play football and then get recognized for that yeah years later is, is definitely a humbling experience yeah i was reading your bio um and you're like a natural born leader because I, I heard that was one of your big one of your strengths not only were you a great player but you're also a great leader for the team so yeah. well yeah. being the youngest of three it helps <laughs> so. i'm the youngest of three too cool. yeah, yeah awesome. you gotta be gotta be that so all right so what are we preparing on today's episode so to we're going to do maryland style crab cakes okay. um scalloped potato and asparagus so you gotta have a starch and a vegetable but more importantly the main entree or main course dish is a uh, maryland style crab cake. star of the show yes. i love crabs do you guys like crabs yeah all right so we're going to do a lot of talking about what we're making on the show today. But to start with the crabs, so we have a pound of jumbo lump crab meat. We have a quarter cup of, I opted with light mayonnaise just to yes. save, some, save some calories. One and a half teaspoons, I'm sorry, of Dijon mustard, which we'll measure out. One and a half teaspoons of Old Bay, which you have to have Old Bay when you yes, have crabs, you right? And one large egg. We have a lemon, yeah. Um, a quarter teaspoon of salt. We have some fresh parsley, which we also have over here we can dice. <laughs> Um, and then some Worcestershire sauce, which I've never had in crab cakes before, but I thought that was Yeah, it just adds a little acidity, yeah. a little, 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 depth. little depth to it. Yeah, so I'm excited. Adds to the flavor. I did, get to, um, I did get to try this recipe this past weekend, and everybody loved it that cool. had it. So, yeah. yeah, it was really good. Um, a little bit of butter for pan frying, give that nice golden, golden yes. brown look. Yeah. And one thing I saw that I've actually never used before in the recipe that, that you gave is um, the bread is actually... Um, like made into little breadcrumbs, but it's not toasted. No, so it that's right. and it's prefer. just to hold it together. Yeah. Um, 
you know, to, to, to give it a little consistency so your crab cake isn't falling apart. That's um, good. So that's what the bread comes. Yeah. Um, so I was I made them that way as well. So um, in this case, we just took some sliced white bread. Um, I did whole grain white bread, and we just. Um, <laughs> Mix up in the food processor to make the crumbs, yep. and then and we have that here. So we have one and a half cups of breadcrumbs. So I say we get mixing um, while we're doing that. What do you think? Yep. All and right. also, you can see others use saltine crackers. There's other means of, of, of avenues to be able to use it again to give the crack paper consistency. Exactly. I also brought out just to show as an example. Um, these are like Italian style breadcrumbs, and you wouldn't want to use these in the right. crab cakes because they would give additional flavors that you might not really want. Um, you, and they also have additional sodium, so it's supposed to, go to add your salt to your food rather than let the breadcrumbs do it. And then just plain panko would be another good That's option. Right. So because this is your recipe, I'm going to let you, let you guys mix. What do you think? Awesome. Get, get right. mixing. So we'll switch it up. It. So if we and could. And here's all your tools. You Normally you start with the sauce first. Okay. So we could just dump the various things in there. So if we want to start with the mayonnaise. Jasmine. And here, Jasmine, you want to do the mayonnaise? Here's a little, look at how cute this little spatula is, right? And this is not measured yet, so. And it looks like a shark fin. It's been shark week, so. <laughs> oh, we have shark sharks week. Mind, you know, so. I do not like shark week. I, mean, I, I'm, I'm, I have a fear of sharks. I think that's it. Happening in there. So take the Dijon. And just a little bit, not all of it, just a yeah. teaspoon. Just and then, a teaspoon, and just dump it in. And then another half. And another half. So Dijon mustard is, is a nice flavor like addition to this, this recipe as well. So, um, and then here comes the star of the show. That should be all measured. She can just dump yep, it just right dump in Just dump the Obey in. And one of the primary ingredients of Obey is actually celery um, salt. So that's always interesting. I never really thought about it. You don't think celery salt. when you think Obey, <laughs> yep. but it packs a lot of, of flavor. All, all of it. it, yep. So a quarter teaspoon of salt. Is it stuck in there? Get out of there, salt. And then... I'll so we'll just tear. So we have some fresh, fresh flat leaf parsley, and I'm not sure what you prefer. I usually use the flat leaf, and I'm just going to show you really quick. If you've never chopped herbs, what I like to do is if you ball them up into a little ball like this. Are you ready to do it? Ball them up, and I'm just going to give a couple chops and let you do the rest, and then you just kind of, kind of slide through it with the knife, working through the back. I'm just take this out of your way for a minute. Go ahead. Thank you. A lot of people, when they think parsley, they just think it colors the plate. But it actually is loaded with vitamin A. It has more than 100% of your daily vitamin A, over 50% of your vitamin C, and I'm ready for this, 547% of your daily value of vitamin K, and only a quarter of a cup. So that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. I'm going to give it one more quick chop. Just to, It was really good. Isn't it nice the way when you ball them together, you don't have to move them as much? We're just going to kind of eyeball. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. And I, um, this is going to give like a lot of color to it. So it's about a tablespoon and a half. So we'll just put a little bit. OK, right. what do we got next? So we have breadcrumbs. I will pass them over to you. Do you want to do okay. the honors? Put the breadcrumbs in. So that's a, a cup and a half of bread. And like I said, we, we opted for the whole grain white bread just to give it a little bit more fiber. And then if you want to crack the egg to put it in. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you do that? Here you go. I'm going to get you a bowl, though. Hold on. OK, go for it. And you can just pop the shell right back in here. Pour it in. Yep. And then we'll go in with the lemon. And I think, Jada, you said you wanted to, or Jasmine, you said you wanted to do one, right? I'm just going to chop it for you. There you go. Fancy little lemon squeezer. But squeeze it in here because we're going to measure it out. Okay. Get some muscle. <laughs> Easy. Easy squeezy. That was my There egg. you go. So then how about we do a teaspoon and a half of that. So just do about one and a half of those. Can I um count it? One. A little bit more. Just two more. Yeah. Beautiful. And the lemon really um, brightens the flavors a lot. Yeah. And then what else do we got? Is that and then do you want us to mix that around with the special and then incorporate the crab meat? Is that how you usually do it? Do you usually? Yeah, just mix it and then incorporate mm -hmm. the crab meat after. So. Mix it. And when you're usually jumbo lump crab meat, you're paying for those really big pieces of crab meat. So when you mix it in, um, mixing it in after you have everything else incorporated, and you could start with the wet, mix the wet, and then fold in the crab cake and the breadcrumbs. But mixing it all in together first before you add the crab cakes really holds those pieces of lump, lump crab meat and keeps them intact. That's why we're going to, and we, are we going in with our hands? We're going in. Rolling up those sleeves. Let's go. I don't have any sleeves to roll up, huh? <laughs> Can you and Jada both do it? Can you and Jada both do it? Yeah. Get four hands right in the middle. Go ahead, mix it up. Get in there. Can't be afraid of it. 
They're not live crabs. <laughs> exactly. There's I nothing, don't think they nothing, bite. Nothing's going to pinch. <laughs> so when you're doing the um, the crab cakes, really working on you know incorporating all the ingredients <laughs> is really going to help hold those cakes together. Get it on and side. crab meat is surprisingly an extremely healthy source of protein. It only has about 80 calories per three ounces and delivers a whopping 16 grams of protein. And it also has about 150% of your daily vitamin B12, which is great for energy production. Um, have you guys ever really studied much on B12? It's also good for your brain, so that's also good for yeah. B12. Produces insulin. Exactly. For those who are diabetic, it's exactly. also high in omega-3s. That's right. So, yeah. so he's, Mr. Green is really, Darrell, yes. Darrell um, is really into the, um, the health and wellness aspect aspect of life as well, it, right? It's, it's extremely important. Yeah. And, and just for me, this has been a, a family tradition. Um, the crab cakes? So the crab cakes. So my, my great aunts, my grandmother on my mom's side, I was born in Maryland, Eastern Shore. So they, they literally pick crabs for a living in the Phillips Craft Factory. So really cool. this was something that was always a, a, a childhood memory and something that has always stuck. So anytime we can have a go-to, this would be the meal. You don't want to break it up too <laughs> much. You don't want to keep that lump meat lumpy. Yeah. So. so you could, um, so it is, it is really mixed through right now. You can incorporate them if, you, if you're looking for that really like firm, like lumps throughout the crab meat, you could not mix it as much. So it really is a matter of preference. So I, I've met a couple people and I'm still astonished when they tell me that they don't like eating eating crabs right. because they don't like, or they like crabs, they don't, don't like, like picking, picking them. So yeah. like, that's the whole experience yeah, is sitting is. down around the table. Do you guys like to pick crabs? Yeah. yeah. Although they get tired of them and then I end up picking them for them. Oh yeah, I was going to say, I'd be like, okay, yeah, no more for you. All right, so who is going to form them? So what we can do, and you want to maybe take, get maybe eight up, eight crab cakes out of it. Okay. Um, just simply pack, maybe an inch thick. Okay. Um, just pack them together pack and make them, them into a cake. Come in here. Come on, Adrian. So, mm -hmm. perfect. There you go. Pack one, Jazz. Getting your kid, your hands yeah. are your best yeah. kitchen tools. That's a lot. You use them. She's like, that That's one's harsh. for me. That's yeah. why. <laughs> and again, maybe it's just about an inch thick. JD might want to grab a little more. It's very similar to making yeah. making meatballs. Exactly. Yeah. And with crab cakes, um, you could make them right away, but the longer they sit, the more those flavors really pull together okay. in the crab cake and make them even more enjoyable than they already are. And Crabs so, are wonderful just yeah. by themselves. And this is where the prep comes in. So if we could actually do it maybe an hour to three hours in the refrigerator after you would do this, okay. probably get the best flavor out of it. Best flavor out of it, yeah. Yeah, let this them sit, kind of looks like a heart. sit and pull together. Daddy, look. It looks like a what? A heart? Aw, a little heart crab cake. We and love crab cakes. I know. And seafood's <laughs> so good for your heart. Like your dad said, it's packed with omega-3s um, and protein and all those good What's vitamins. What's the smallest and one? Let me... This one? Smallest one. Let's put this in. That's the one I just did. <laughs> Make your smaller one a bigger one. So you can see the crab cakes. You can see the flecks of green in there mm -hmm. add a, light, a lot of nice color. You see the lump white crab meat really pulls out. And like we were talking earlier, you could do more of a folding and get more lump in there. So people are always looking for recipes that don't have a lot of breading, breading and have yeah. more, more crab meat than they right. do breading. I think this one has a really good ratio. Just enough bread to really pull it pull together. together. Yep. But it doesn't, you're not getting like some of them, you're like, um, is this a crab Spr cake? Or is this a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this like sprinkled with crab cake? All right, so we're going to let these rest and we are going to clean up this mess. You guys can wash your hands with more than just wiping off with paper towels. And then when we come back, we are going to get started on the scallop potatoes, which I also made this weekend and are also really good. But we are going to also at this break, learn a little bit about more about the nutritional properties of crab. So let's get cleaned up. No need to feel crabby. Crabs are good for you. Let's break it down. For a minimal amount of calories, crab packs big protein punch. For about 80 calories in three ounces of cooked blue crab, you get approximately 17 grams of high quality protein that's easy to digest and without a lot of unhealthy saturated fats. It's also rich in vitamins and minerals and contain healthy omega-3 fatty acids to provide protection from heart disease, reduce inflammation, while also aiding the development of our brains. Now let's talk copper, not the metal, the mineral. Crab meat is an excellent source of copper, which assists our bodies with the absorption of iron and the formation of red blood cells. So in a crab shell, crab meat on its own is really more than just a treat for your palate. It's also a treat for your body. So next time you're thinking about sitting down to enjoy some crabs or maybe even a crab cake, take a moment to not only enjoy the delicious flavor, but also the nutrients you're providing yourself. Just skip the high sodium seasonings and the butter for dipping and get cracking. Now, back to the Crabtastic Show. Welcome back. 
The crab cakes we just made are actually all formed and sitting in the refrigerator, like we said, for one to three hours, yep. right? For the flavors to really pull together. Although one flavor we forgot to add that I made them take all the crab cakes apart. We added it back into the crab cakes and reformed them all was Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce? Is that how you say it? Say it. Say it. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire. How do you say it? I can't say you got Just try. Worcestershire. It's fun. <laughs> Worcestershire, I think, is the right way. I don't, yes. I don't think I ever say it the right way. So I just say Worcestershire because it makes you laugh. So that's all that matters. So we forgot to add the, the Worcestershire yeah. um, sauce, which does add a lot of flavor to the crab cakes. Um, and again, some people use it, some people don't. Yeah. It's not in every recipe. So. Exactly. Yeah, because I've never seen before. And I was like, interesting. It's, it's very good. It's it, a green has, family secret. So it, now the, the, the cat's out the bag. Cat's out of the bag. See, I think, that's, I think that he meant to not put it in there, didn't he? So we are going to get started um, finishing the started on the scalloped potatoes. I have already um, sliced a half of them and we're going to slice the rest. We're using a mandolin and the good thing about the mandolin is you set the thickness on the side and then as you're slicing it just gives you a uniform consistency on size of potatoes which, which works, works really nice for this recipe. I'm just, I think I'm stuck on W's now because all that works for sauce. I can't get my W's out. So the scalloped potatoes, I want to quickly talk about what we're using today. We have gone, um, we've opted for Yukon Gold. You could also use russet potatoes. Potatoes. Yukon Gold have a softer skin, so it's good to keep the skin on. A lot of the nutrition is in the skin. <laughs> so the Yukon Gold, you could use russet as well. Um, and then we also have um, a, a Vidalia onion, which is a sweet onion. So we got a Vidalia onion. We have some garlic that's already minced. Um, so that, that onion and the garlic adds a really nice flavor to this. And then we have sharp, um, extra sharp cheddar cheese, which J uh, Jada is going to grate for us using the fancy hand grater. Um, some Parmesan cheese. A little bit of flour when we make the roux, which is a combination of the onions, garlic, and then some chicken stock and some milk um, and some butter as well. It's always a ne necessary part for a roux. And then, of course, salt and pepper. So we're going to get started. And a scalloped potato is really just a really thin sliced potato layered with lots of cheese, a nice creamy sauce, and then you bake it in the oven and it all pulls together beautifully. Yes. So they this have is how I make mine. <laughs> so Jess is doing it from scratch, but this is how we do it in, our, in the green household. And that's so. perfectly fine. When I met with him, he was like, a box scallop potatoes. I was like, no, we can do it from scratch. He's like, okay. All right, so let's get started. Enough talking. I'm going to start um, slicing. And would you like to start the roux if you want to start with sure. a little bit of about one and a half teaspoons of butter into a pan? So if you just want to, um, that's, that's a full stick. So there's about eight tea tablespoons in a stick so about a one and a half tablespoons of butter is going to go into the pan and the butter is really important for like i said earlier the butter and the flour that combination um is what makes the roux so he's going to start sauteing and you know what i should have had you do to start actually i'm a onion yes yeah, slice and dice in the onion i'm jumping ahead do you want the big old chef knife or this medium medium sauce. medium good so he's going to get a dice on the onion while he starts that why and the butter's going to start melting why don't, Jada, why don't you start grating the okay. cheese? And, sorry. and I've, I don't use a grater that often, but I have looked back at a lot of the previous episodes, and I think a grater has made a uh, showing at almost every episode of Red Clay Cook-Off, so I thought we might as well not buy fresh grated and like make you work, right? Down. Just kidding. Onions are making me cry. Oh, no, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> and onions do tend to have that, um, that effect. Can make, you, guys, you guys aren't crying, are you? No. You might. You could opt to use um, half sweet potatoes in this recipe and do a combination of layering sweet potatoes with the Yukon Gold. Go ahead and pop the cheese in there just so we can see how much you have. You need, you need a cup. So the sweet potatoes, if you did that, would they're, you know, they're, they're obviously sweet. So it would be a different flavor profile, but it would work in that as well. And the onions, you're going to saute just until they're a little bit translucent. Um, you, can, you can pop in the garlic, yep. And the garlic, um, it's okay. Oh, goodness. The garlic does add a lot of nice flavor, and you're going with um, one and a half teaspoons of garlic. So we got the cheeses grated. You did a fine job. Look at that. Beautiful. So while the onions are sauteing, we are going to start prepping the thyme. You can just use cooking spray, but I always think this is more fun. Grab the, um, I'm, I'm like bossing you around. <laughs> Grab the, uh, the oil, actually. Uh. Put a little bit, you could use butter as well if you wanted to. We're just going to go with a little bit of oil just because it'll paint on a little bit better just to prep the pan. So she's going to do that. Jasmine and I are going to get the time ready. So, all right, who wants to help me with this? Me. Time? Do you have time to help me with the time? <laughs> what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> Comedian. You can bring out the drum set you were doing earlier now. <laughs> when you're working with time, this is a really good, um, like I said, it's, it smells so good. It's like lemony, herby. Um, when you're working with thyme, you can just hold the sprig 
at the top. Um, where, so you go where the leaves, the opposite end, the leaves are going, and you just run your fingers. Ready? It's going to rain time. What are you doing? Oh. It's raining time. It's raining time. Okay. So it just rained some time, and we need about one and a half teaspoons. And for the onion, am I putting the salt and the pepper in? So we got a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. I don't know if it is measured or not. Just do a couple a pinch. pinches. Yep. And the good thing about making um, scalloped potatoes from, from scratch, you really can control the sodium. Um, a lot of times when you are buying pre-made things, uh, dishes, the convenience does come with a price, and the price is that they add a lot of sodium to the dish. So when you're making it at home, you can control all of that. So Jada, why don't you start layering the potatoes, and we're going to kind of just layer, layer them over, kind of overlapping a little bit. Do you, how are your knife skills? Do you want to give this a with quick this? chop? Yep. Okay, so with this, you don't have to worry about pundling. Just make like a little time tower. So Jada is giving it a rough chop. I'm having a mini heart attack. I'm just kidding. You're doing really good. So you can add, um, why don't you add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And the flour and the butter are going to pull together um, and make a roux. You're going to cook that for just, a, just like about a minute or so, maybe a little bit less until it makes almost like a little paste. And then you're going to come in with the chicken stock and the milk. And you can go ahead and take that. And again, we opted for low sodium chicken mm -hmm. stock. Yeah. Do you mind doing the honors? Pour it in there. Pour it in there. And you can see how, how nice those onions have caramelized, the flowers coated them beautifully. And you're gonna scrape all the bottom little bits off the pan, which is he's, he's doing. You can tell you get in that kitchen a lot. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> and one cup of milk, right? Is that what we're going with? Yes. We're gonna go to one cup. And I'll stay down here. I'll tell you when here. you're there. Yep. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Keep going. Are we there? Yep, almost. Keep going. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Oh, my God. You're good. So a cup of milk. So the chicken no, stock, is if you add that first, let it kind yeah. of pull together. Saturated you could use cream or whole milk, um, which does come with a lot more saturated fat. We went with 2% milk today. All right, so while that finishes pulling together, it's going to thicken a little bit more. Why don't you guys start um, with sprinkling? You guys can both do it. Sprinkle the cheese evenly over the potatoes. Like that. And we have the oven preheated to 400 degrees, so you make sure you want to make sure you do that. So when you are ready to pop it in the oven, it um, you know has ample time to cook. Come on, watch out. So you're going to sprinkle about half about half the cheese because you're going to reserve half for the top, which is going to make it really golden brown. One ingredient I did not I, for, I did forget to mention, which um, you don't have to add, but we do have pecorino romano cheese. Um, which we're gonna freshly grate on the top. It adds a lot of flavor, it's very nutty. Um, and when you, when you grate it fresh, it just kind of melts beautifully into the top. So that's about good. Save about half of that for the top. And then we're gonna go in and layer the other half of the potatoes. We're gonna do a half a cup of Parmesan. I'm just gonna, here, give me your hand. This is about a half a cup, right? Well, you got a quarter cup. You wanna get your hand, hands dirty, Jasmine? I guess so. Sprinkle it on. And traditionally, you, you could put oh. that in the middle layer. I forgot. And boop, boop, boop. And Parmesan cheese adds so much flavor, like the pungent flavor. There's a, a guy, famous chef, he's on Instagram and he does a little mm -hmm. technique with sprinkles of salt. Oh, is that the way you do it? Yeah. I'll have to, can I, can I steal that for all future mm -hmm. episodes? All right, so what, is it, what do I say? You don't gotta say anything. Just, just, it's just the move. Just That's the I'll move. do it. Mm -hmm. The move. It's all okay? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go. Like the little emer emerald, bam. Okay, so um, you were supposed to layer some of the sauce, and I did. I did forget that part. So if you want to just come in and pour the sauce evenly over top, excuse me, Jasmine. And it'll all it'll all come down to the bottom. It's gonna Hot pan. find its way through all those little crevices. Let's see it fall down. Look at it. I think I can eat it just like that. A little crunchy on the potatoes, mm -hmm. but all right. So girls, if you could do the honors of topping with the rest of the cheese. It's a lot. They compete in the kitchen at home too. So. Do they? Are you, do you usually, are you usually the ref? Try to be. <laughs> it's, a, it's always a competition with, I had a sister too. Oh, no. oh. Oh. <laughs> so the cheese, the cheese and the sauce are really going to pull together. The starch from the sauce, it, we did thicken it in the pan, but it will also thicken more in the oven. So we're going to cover it with foil and we're going to let it bake, like I said, at 400 degrees for about, um, 30 minutes, and then we're gonna take the foil off and let it finish baking. And then when we come back after this, we are going to do the asparagus, which was our last, yes. last addition to this wonderful dish, which I'm so excited to eat today, by the way. So if you wanna bring these back here, I will, you wanna open the oven? It's on, it's gonna be hot. I think my words are a little jumbled today. It'll feel hot. Can you fit it in there or should I? All right, perfect. 
so they're in there. Do we, we just sit here 30 minutes and watch. <laughs> no? Is that going to be really boring? Yeah. yeah. All right, so when we come back, it is time to um, finish up. We'll clean this up, and we'll get started on the asparagus, so stay tuned. It's time for the Red Clay Nutrition Trivia Challenge. Here's your question. What color is asparagus? A, green. B, purple. C, white. Or D, all of the above. The answer is D. While green asparagus is what is most commonly found on the grocery store shelves, asparagus can also be white. White asparagus is just green asparagus that is grown without light. It contains less nutrients than the purple and green variety. Green asparagus is the most commonly consumed asparagus and is grown in the sunlight and packs the most flavor. Purple asparagus gets its color from the antioxidant anthocyanin, a pigment and antioxidant also found in berries. In every spear of this delicious and extremely nutritious vegetable, you'll be serving yourself up an excellent dose of vitamin K, folate, antioxidants, fiber, and so much more. So roast it, grill it, steam it, or snap it fresh. Enjoy this amazing, healthy, and versatile veggie. Welcome back. We hope you did good on that pop quiz. Did you guys learn something? Yeah? yeah. All right. So now we are going to pull this all together by pan frying the crab cakes, which Jarell is going to walk me through. Yes. And we are going to pop the asparagus in the oven and make also a healthy tartar sauce. So if you want to start, you can um, start walking us through what you do with the um, crab cakes. It's very simple. Again, we've pulled them out. They've been in the refrigerator for about an hour, three hours. So the, the, the flavors have kind of they're sunk in and they're, they're, they're compacted. and. So we just take a little butter, um, you, you know, put your butter in your pan. I normally take maybe about a half a tablespoon or so. Okay. And the butter not only adds flavor, but it adds a lot of that color. Color, so it, yeah. Yeah. And so, well, normally on a, a side anywhere from four to, to six minutes a side. Okay. Um, just to brown them lightly and again, the flavor's already in the crab cake, so. Yeah. We'll just brown Stop. them up. Brown yeah. them up. Awesome. And you could, um, if you were trying to watch, if you were watching your calories, you could... Olive oil. Uh, yeah, olive oil, yeah. exactly. Um, you can always bake them. I think the pan frying is better because you just get that nice crispy, crispy coat. coat on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but if you were watching that, you could either just use a little less or use olive oil, whatever you want. I mean, a little bit of butter is, is never a bad thing. Everything in moderation is, is the secret to a good life, right? So with asparagus, you want to kind of look for the natural break because all this back here, there it is. The natural it break. She in. found it before me. All this back here is very fibrous, Good. so if you try and eat that, done. it will be tough. Uh, vitamin K um, is also really prevalent in asparagus. So just like we were talking about how parsley is high in vitamin K, asparagus is too. And it's what we call a nutrient-dense food. And what nutrient-dense means is for a little bit of calories, it packs a huge punch when it comes to nutrition. So a lot of vegetables are considered nutrient-dense. What's your favorite vegetable? Broccoli. You broccoli. Brussels sprouts too. Brussels sprouts? How about you? I love Brussels sprouts. Broccoli. Broccoli? Have a Brussels sprouts. You like them? Yeah. Yeah? What's yours? Asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. And you name it? Green, yeah. Anything green. So go ahead and drizzle that. I, I was talking to her about drizzling the olive oil over the asparagus. She's like, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So she's going to go ahead and drizzle the olive oil on the asparagus. And this way you don't have to dirty another dish. You can just do a one pan kind of kind of rodeo. You can do a little bit more. Um, and olive oil is a great source of uh, healthy fats. That's good. So we're using an extra virgin olive oil and pinch of salt, pinch of pepper coming at you. Don't forget the move. Do you want to do the move for the pepper? Sure. She's doing the move. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> All right. Would you mind um, just doing a, one or two more sprigs of those? She's going to, I'm going to just do a little bit more time to put fresh on the potatoes, which I am going to pull out of the oven. So she's just going to toss them, mix the olive oil and salt and pepper, get them all incorporated over the asparagus sphere so they'll cook nice and e evenly. You can also steam asparagus. Traditionally, you'd, you'd like asparagus yes, steamed. Steam. When you roast asparagus, you're going to cook it at 400, which is the same temperature as the scalloped potatoes, which makes this an easy dish to put together. Shake, 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 shake the pan. So with this dish, you can put the asparagus in the oven, which you would cook the potatoes about 30 minutes. You would take the foil off, and that would be about the time when you're going to put the asparagus in the oven, and it'll cook an additional 20 minutes. The asparagus cooked 20 minutes. You want to toss it or turn it halfway through, and the potatoes will finish cooking. Um, we do have a pan of asparagus ready in the back, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that, and the potatoes I'll pull out as well. And we are going to move on to trying those crab cakes. Would you, um, do, do, would you pick up the door for me? Thank you, dear. Okay, coming at you. Hot potato, hot potato. All right, there you go. So look at the beautiful color on those potatoes. The cheese is all melted and looks so gooey and delicious. 
Are you excited to try it? Don't put your nose on it because it's hot to smell it. Smell it. Do you want me? Do you want to smell it? <laughs> smells good. I didn't want to leave you out. Yeah. All right, so can you do me a favor and just give that a quick chop and you can sprinkle that on. Can you do me a favor, Jada? Can you take this and what you're going to do, this is the um, Lacatella, Parmigiano, um, I'm sorry, uh, Romano cheese. You're going to take it and just use this little, this is a microplaner. I'm like holding this. Oops. I'll ditch those. Um, you're going to take this and you're going to just grate over it. And you'll see as you're grating, the cheese just melts right in there. This adds a lot of nutty, cheese, like cheesy flavor. I'm going to grab the asparagus while you do that. Look at that beautiful goodness. I'm so excited to eat. I don't know about you guys, but I am hungry. Could you grab me those tongs? Do you feel comfortable? It's not a really hot pan, but can you grab those asparagus spears and plate that for me? Right here? Yeah, they're right here. So while these finish cooking, would you guys want to sample what we already have done? What do you think? Sure. About time. We've worked so hard. I think we deserve it. All right. So we have a couple plates, or four plates, I should say, and some forks, and a little spoon for a lot of potatoes. There you but go. we'll make it work. <laughs> All right, whoop, onion cheese. Yeah. Coming in. Plate up. You want some potatoes? Just is this good? Yeah, that's good. Hot potato. Yeah, hot yeah. potato, hot potato. These smell so good. You see the brown, see the caramelization of the cheese on the outside? Mm, try this first. Try the crab cake first. Is it good? How good? So good. So good? Right hot potato coming at you, and there's a fork for you. I think the uh, tongs are here if we need them as well. Okay. There's a fork. So was it was all this um, was all this work worth it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll let my guests eat first. I usually don't do that, but you guys are special guests, and I am going to. You don't have to, but I'm going to try a dollop of tartar on there. Let's see. Try it, Dad. Let's see it. Mm. What do you think? Is it good? Mm -hmm. Try this. So, what do you guys think of the scallop potatoes? Do you like them better than the ones out of the box, or do you like them? Do you like the box ones better? I never had the box ones. You never had the box ones. So this is our first time trying it. Oh. So she tried yours, so now we have to make them scratch. No longer in the box. I am so honored. See, that is her first time trying scallop potatoes. All right. Super. Super good. All right, so we are going to finish eating. I'm going to eat some more of those crab cakes. We're going to finish all this stuff off, the, the asparagus, some potatoes, um, more crab cakes. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for coming here and joining us on the show. I know you've, you have a very busy schedule. Thank you. Um, yeah, and it's been, it's been great having you in Red Clay so far, and I look, to, look forward to many more um, experiences working with you. Perfect way to start a new school year. Exactly. You have a busy one ahead, yeah. I'm sure. So yeah. good luck. Thank you. Yeah. And um, you guys are busy as well, and thank you so much. I know it's busy in seventh and fourth grade, right? So thank you so much, and don't forget, you are not cooking in style unless you're cooking in family, family style. style. My name is Emily Hamlin, and I'm a registered dietitian who works in the Red Clay Nutrition Department. Did you know that there are three dietitians who work in the department, including your host, Jessica Terranova, and Jessica Ferrand, who's also been featured on the show. Although we each have different job responsibilities, we share the common goal of making sure that Red Clay students get healthy, delicious, and nutritious meals while at school. We have strict guidelines from the United States Department of Agriculture that includes making sure calories, sodium, and saturated fat meet strict guidelines. We even have guidelines for vegetables. We must offer five vegetable subgroups each week that include red orange vegetables, starchy, dark green, other, and beans. So make sure that you're grabbing a rainbow of colors when you come through the lunch line at school. Hey, Cook-Off fans, it's your host, Jessica Terranova. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, make sure to click the thumbs up below. And for notifications when we post new episodes, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.